to my tutorial on digitizing your watercolor artwork. I love to do watercolor, <clears throat> but what really held me back was learning how to digitize my artwork. So my goal here today is to give you just an easy, straightforward way to digitize your watercolor artwork. Um, it's probably easier than you think it is. It just takes a little bit of practice. Um, I am using Photoshop today. You will need Photoshop. And I have the latest version and update. I also used a scanner to scan in my artwork, but some people use their phone and take pictures and bring it into Photoshop, whatever works for you. If you do scan, make sure you scan at at least 300 DPI. Um, anything less than that is not gonna give you the quality that you need to really get a beautiful um, piece of artwork. So we're gonna focus on two pieces today. The first one is going to be slightly easier than the second one. The second piece has a lot of really, really light water watercolor elements, which can be difficult to digitize, but I'll show you how. And the first one is obviously a lot more contrasted between the white, so it'll be easier to do that. So let's get started. I'm not gonna give you guys a tutorial on Photoshop. This is specifically for digitizing your artwork. So we're not gonna go through all of these different tools. I'm just gonna show you the ones that I use. So once you scan your artwork or take a picture and bring it into Photoshop, what I like to do is, this should say background layer, but I've already messed with it a little bit. Um, I like to duplicate this. So I'm gonna click, drag, and go to this little plus sign. And now I have two copies of this. The reason I like to do that is if I really mess up this one, I have this one that I can fall back on. So just um, turn off that layer. And let's get started. My favorite, favorite tool is the Magic Eraser. It makes things so, so easy. Um, you're gonna go up here and you want your tolerance since this is, the contrast is so high, a 25 tolerance is going to be best for this. And all I'm gonna do is just click. And it's super easy. We got a lot of the white gone and then I can come in here and kind of get rid of that too there's a little bit of white there just click around uh, that was probably a little too far we can leave that and then these guys I'm actually going to grab my regular eraser tool watercolor paper can get a little bit dirty so um, I grab my eraser tool to just erase it if you guys don't know if you hold down spacebar you get this little hand and you can click and kind of move your piece around. It's a lifesaver. The shortcuts on, on Adobe Photoshop are amazing. I highly recommend learning them. Then this was a flower from another artwork piece that got scanned in. I wanna erase it. So I'm just gonna um, keep pressing the right bracket to make my eraser really big. I'm gonna get rid of it. Now, if this piece is going to be printed on white paper, you're probably fine right now. Um, but if you are wanting to sell your artwork on something like Creative Market or you have a client that wants this on a darker background, you're going to really make sure, you really need to make sure that all the white is gone. And we can't really tell right now because we know we've removed most of it, but we can't see, you know, we just can't see it as well at, unless we change the background to black. So add a layer and you're going to add it on top of this orange or you're going to move it but it doesn't matter right now <laughs> so select your paint bucket you have black um, as your color and click and then take your artwork move it above the layer and you're going to be able to see if there's anything that needs to be cleaned up so i'm going back to my regular eraser tool i'm going to get these little guys i'm going to come in and I can see that this stuff is not that pretty and I wanna get rid of it. So you have a couple options here. You can come in here and make your eraser small and kind of go along like this, which is gonna give it a little bit more of a smooth edge because that's kind of what just what the eraser tool does. You could play with um, it a little bit, but that's okay, but I also wanna show you another option. If you don't like that option, we're actually gonna go up here. So on the leaf, 
this is extra, this is part of the paper and we don't want that. I'm gonna go to my, um, sorry, magnetic lasso tool and you need to make sure that feather is at zero. If you have the feather at 15, I'll show you what's gonna happen. You're gonna get it to be really, really blurry. Don't worry, I'll show you how to do this. I'm just giving you an example of what's gonna happen with the feathering really quick. Okay, just kidding, that's not gonna work. <laughs> Let's try 10 and see if it does it. Oh my God, what the fuck? There's some stuff here that I wanna get rid of and I'm gonna go back and select my um, magnetic lasso tool. You're gonna to wanna to have feather at zero here. If you go up any higher, it's going to make this kind of blurry because think about feathering, it's trying to blend it in. <clears throat> but I don't really want that. I want it to be pretty clean. I guess that's a personal preference, but I like having it at zero. Also, sometimes it doesn't work if it's not at zero. So just put it at zero. And then I click and a little dot comes up. And the magnetic tool, for the most part, if it can find the edges, it'll kind of magnetize to that color. Whoops! But sometimes it gets a little out of control. If it goes where you don't want it to go, just select delete and it'll go back to the dot before it. So I like to click because it makes me feel like I have more control, but you just click and kind of move your mouse. I'm not gonna do the whole thing because I wanna show you guys um, this quickly but you would have to go and do this entire thing. And then I'm gonna click again, and then I'm gonna go back around because I'm trying to delete this white here. All the way back and click onto your original starting dot and hit delete. And then I'm gonna select Command D to make that little marching ant thing go away. And there you go, I removed all of that white edge. So then I would go and do this entire thing. Yes, it's very time consuming, but it's gonna make it look really, really beautiful and you're gonna have a piece of artwork that looks very professional. So that is that. Oh, another thing I'll show you guys really quick is, say you wanna come in here and clean up this. So these are pencil marks that did not get covered up well. You can grab your healing brush tool and it's gonna say option click. So you're gonna hit option and then you're gonna click to select the color that you want. And then it'll apply it to this area. So option click, I want it to be this orange. And then I'm just gonna go in here and click away and it erases it. So nice, isn't Photoshop amazing? <laughs> I messed up my artwork and now I can fix it. So you could go ahead and do that and it'll take away all the pencil marks. Next, we're gonna move into the more difficult piece. I'm just gonna drop this into Photoshop. Okay, again, what I like to do is duplicate this layer, turn this layer off, and as you can see, this is pretty light. So watch what's gonna happen when I do the magic eraser. I'm sorry. Wait, yeah, the magic eraser. <laughs> I'm gonna hit the magic eraser and my tolerance is at 25. Oh man, look how much I lost. I lost all this beautiful pink petal right here. Um, if you, What you can do is some of this you might be able to use that high of a tolerance for, like in here. See, it didn't really get rid of any of my artwork or over here. So for that kind of stuff, it's great, but see, it's gonna get rid of those lighter petals if the pixels are touching. So I'm going to Command Z and delete what just happened. I'm gonna go back up to my tolerance and see if I can maybe go down to, let's try one. So one's the lowest and see what happens. So, you know, it looks pretty good. Um, it's it's not get, getting rid of this pink petal, but again, it's not super clean. And unfortunately, if you wanted a really quick and easy way to do this, 
It's not quick and easy. Um, it's easy, but you're gonna have to come in here with your magnetic lasso tool. So I'm gonna just go back really quick because and show you guys how, I just wanted to show you an example of the different tolerances and what they do. So for light watercolor, you're gonna wanna have a really low tolerance. Um, but for some of these pieces inside, I can increase my tolerance, not that piece. Here we go. And I can get rid of a lot of that. Um, nope, not that. I can get rid of that piece and make it really, really clean. Watch when I put um, a black layer underneath it. Look how how good it looks. I mean, it's it's pretty, pretty tight. And the nature of watercolor is that it's going to have kind of bumpy edges because the watercolor paper is textured, but that's normal. People usually want that when they ask for watercolor artwork. Um, but all this other stuff, we got to get rid of the white background still. So I'm going to remove that layer and see if there's anything else I can use the magic eraser on at a higher tolerance. What's going on? Oh, I was on the wrong layer. Yeah, no. Because it touches, it's going to get rid of that. So it looks like we're going to have to reduce this. Let's try five for tolerance. Ooh, five worked. That's good. So we can go in here, click, click, click. Um, not in there. Dun, dun, dun. And the higher the tolerance, or I'm sorry, the lower the tolerance, the less clean lines you're going to get because it's trying to protect those really, really light areas. So it doesn't want to get too, too close to it because it might erase it like we saw earlier. But if the contrast is high between the paper and the artwork, like it is over here, you should be able to remove a good portion of it without losing any artwork. Then I'm gonna go in and go tolerance one. I'm still with the magic eraser. Oh, see, we should have, sorry. Let's go to 15 over here because it's a little darker. Oops. I accidentally clicked on purple. So what the magic eraser is gonna do is whatever you click, it's going to take that color and remove whatever it finds of that color. So if I did that with the purple, it's removing the purple. Get this. Oops, no. We could probably, sorry, do this. Nope. You're looking for areas that have higher contrast. That's what's going to allow you to use the magic eraser at a higher tolerance. Yeah, we're going to have to do some work in here. Okay. <laughs> and then you can increase it again so you can get more of this stuff out of here. Okay, so let's do our black background so we can really see what's going on here. Um, like I said before, if this is going to be printed on white, you'd probably be okay because there's, you're not really going to be able to tell the, the white that's hanging off here. But if it's printed on another color or you're going to sell it, you really should uh, make sure it looks really good. Because, gosh, how horrified would you be if you saw this? come printed out on something. Oh my gosh. So I'm going to take my regular eraser and I'm getting rid of all these little white specks. I just like to make it really large. It makes it so much easier. Come in here. Da, 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 da. And I'm just going to show you guys. I, I if You don't want to sit here and watch me use the magnetic lasso tool for this entire thing. But I'm going to show you what it looks like. Over here, it's the same thing. I'm clicking, releasing, and the la and pulling my mouse, and the lasso tool hugs, or the magnetic lasso tool hugs 
the color, so this like green. And anytime you see it kind of getting squirrely, you can click and it gives it basically an anchor point. Again, you want the feather to be zero because we're trying to get a really tight line here. And then I want to go back up because I want it to get all this. I'm just dragging, 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 and then I'm clicking back to that very first dot and you get the marching ants and you can see on the lasso tool there's a minus sign or a subtraction sign. It should be subtraction because you're getting rid of the background so make sure it has that. Then I'm going to select delete and I'm going to hit command D to get rid of my marching ants and there you go. So I'm going to go through and this is going to speed up and I'm going to show you how I get rid of all of this and how clean it looks. All right, this is completely digitized. So, you know, we could change this background color to anything and we have a super clean piece of artwork that can go on any color and you're not gonna see the white. Oh, I see one little spot right here that I'm gonna fix later, but that's how you digitize. I used a combination of the magnetic um, lasso tool and the eraser at different sizes to get rid of the background. So I hope this tutorial was helpful and that you guys are able to digitize your artwork. I know it takes a long time, but that's kind of just part of the process. This is my process that I use, but I know a lot of um, artists use different ones. So explore, see what works for you, and I wish you the best on your digitizing journey.